once two elephant calves from a very large clan, too large for the Kruger National Park. This jumbo-sized family was destroying the trees and decimating the forest. With a severe drought imminent, the South African rangers responsible for maintaining the balance between the elephant population and the available natural resources had no choice but to cull the entire clan. But they took pity on the two orphaned calves and arranged for them to go to the neighboring Chukudu Reserve, which had no elephants. Ten years after the massacre of their family, the male calf Tembo and the young female Becky have reached adolescence, bereft of any role models or family supervision. They've had no adult elephants to teach them discipline or show them how to behave. Today, they've become the tearaways of the reserve, causing chaos within the herds. This baby rhinoceros has only just been born, and already Tembo is trying to pick a fight. The white rhinoceros is the elephant's main rival. Even from a young age, they are continually at loggerheads for the same territory. The small rhino standing up to Tembo clearly has a tough nature and a brave heart. Their rivalry will persist for the next 15 years. In the first three months of his existence, the young rhinoceros stays close to his mother, so he can suckle every half an hour. The young rhinoceros grows fast, and little by little becomes accustomed to leaving the protective maternal fold. It's on one such foray that he meets, for the first time, his father, master of all the females and a killer of elephants, hippos and rhinos. Such a fearsome foe that the reserve's rangers have had to trim his horn. Shorthorn has no real paternal instinct and is especially wary of his son becoming a future rival who could jeopardize his power over the female. The alpha male goes to a specific crossing point several times a day where olfactory information is exchanged. The rangers call it the rhinoceros cyber cafe. Here the alpha male can detect if a female is fertile and deposit his own genetic information over theirs. From this throne which he marks with his scent, he sends out a warning to those who might challenge his supremacy over his territory. With age, the young rhinoceros is becoming bolder and his curiosity is growing. In search of a playmate, he chases anything that moves. One day, he makes a new acquaintance. His half-brother, who is six months his elder, it's an encounter marked by a mix of fear and curiosity, a first meeting where apprehension gives way to the need to sniff one another. The sense of smell is vital and highly developed in these extremely short-sighted creatures. play can make the ever watchful mums nervous. The 
tension disturbs the alpha male's rest. He restores order in his inimitable style, intimidating the females and reminding everyone who's boss with a few well-placed nudges from his still effective horn. The alpha male remains the undisputed king of the Chukudu Reserve. The two orphans, Tembo and Becky, have been growing fast through their carefree adolescence. Their isolation has led them to bond like brother and sister. But with age, Tembo has developed sexual urges, whereas Becky is content with sensual games. Tembo is also beginning to feel the need to test his strength, but has no male of his own species to compete with. To find his place in the pecking order, he looks to the savannah's other heavyweights for this competitive camaraderie, much to the displeasure of the local rhinos. The young adult Tembo never knows when to stop. He has had no mother to teach him social skills, and no father to put him in his place. So Tembo's actions sometimes extend beyond play into harassment. The situation of the rhinoceroses at Chukudu is rather exceptional. In the whole of Africa, rhinoceroses have been decimated by poachers for their horn. The Chukudu reserve protects them at great expense, and they've multiplied very quickly. So, they live in an unusual kind of cohabitation. Drawn by Becky's pheromones, a large bull elephant has set up base in the Tsukudo Reserve. The rangers have fitted him with a GPS tracking collar to monitor him more easily. For the first time in his short life, Tembo is up against someone stronger than himself. The pachyderms first gauge each other cautiously by sniffing. Then one tries to dominate the other by keeping his trunk on his rival's head. larger male soon gets the better of the encounter. The Chukudu Reserve is also sheltering orphan lions. The lion is the main enemy of all these titans. The adults have thick hides to protect themselves against big cats, but the young are easy prey. The mothers defend themselves by forming a group back to back that is like a fortress bristling with deadly horns. 
the baby's cower inside. This orphaned lion cub is too inexperienced to be a dangerous predator, but any movement attracts him, and so he plays at being ready to take risks. And the more agitated the rhinoceroses become, the bolder the lion gets. One mother takes advantage of the fortification formed by the rhinos to spirit her baby away to safety. is another titan of the savanna. The dominant male has worked hard to gather as many females as possible around him, but protecting his harem comes at a price. He constantly has to defend it against bothersome challenges in search of a partner. The younger males live separately in small groups and storm the harem in unison every day in the hope of usurping the dominant male. They test both his fatigue and their own bravery. might appear to be a peaceful, flabby layabout, but the hippo possesses deadly weaponry. Its ivory teeth make powerful daggers. They can rip through flesh and fatally injure opponents with a single bite. So rival hippos take each other on with caution. The adversaries confront each other warily. Threatening roars can be enough to ward off a competitor. Yet again, the large male has successfully put the young bachelors in their place. The alpha male has completed his show of force, and reassured of his competitor's weakness, he can return to his harem. Since he hasn't overexerted himself, he uses this moment of peace and quiet to mate with one of the females before the young bachelors resume their harassment. A 
At night, the lions prowl and spread fear around the watering holes. The dominant male is alert as he escorts a female and her newborn away from their refuge on the baby's first outing. After emerging from the water, the male announces his presence by leaving his calling card, which contains key information like state of health, sex, age and strength. Reassured by the strong sense of his father, the calf explores some new smells and samples his first meal on dry land. The family leaves in search of long grass to feed on. They sometimes roam as far as 20 kilometers from their watering hole and have their fair share of dangerous encounters. The alpha male senses a hostile presence. Some rhinos have come to drink at the lake and are blocking the route back to their home. It's common to find the corpses of hippos whose stomachs have been pierced by an angry rhino near the lake. A lion stubbornly tracks the baby hippos and rhinos. refuses to re-enter the water. He is so excited by his first experience on the bank and oblivious to the threat posed by lions and rhinos. As the family's chief educator and disciplinarian, the father firmly encourages him to return home. One after the other, they thread a path through the edgy rhinoceroses. Once in the water, the hippos feel safe and the baby can approach the rhino on the bank without fear. Each is in a strong position in their natural element. Dead of night, the dominant elephant mates with Becky as Tembo looks on passively. The alpha male is still with the young rhinoceros and his mother. He's waiting for the mother to be fertile again. The baby is now six months old and will soon be weaned. The alpha male's presence gives the young rhinoceros an early chance to test his strength. The young rhinoceros has found a playmate in his half-brother. 
Their play combines affectionate caresses with friendly fights. Each rhinoceros has its own character. The young rhinoceros is provocative and quarrelsome, while his half-brother is much more relaxed. One day, the young rhinoceros will become a dominant male, but it's going to take time. Several years have passed, and after 22 months of uneventful gestation, Becky has given birth to an elephant calf. A clan has formed around her. The large bull who fathered the calf, and Tembo, second in the pecking order, who's playing the role of educator, normally filled by another female. Becky offers her baby the permanent protection of her body and her vigilance, but little in the way of affection. The calf mostly learns by imitation. Having been orphaned at a very young age, Becky received scant instruction herself. Consequently, she has few lessons to pass on, and sometimes selfishly pinches food from her baby's trunk. The animals of Chukudu have grown up together. At least they mix with each other more than they would elsewhere. The only calf in the clan, this baby is bursting with enthusiasm as she looks for playmates and tests her limits. But her antics are risky. Due to their high numbers, buffalo occupy a large amount of territory. They trample the ground throughout the day decimating the sparse pasture with their hundreds of hooves. At the watering hole, they come into direct competition with the rhinos. During a drought, access to the watering hole is crucial. The young rhinoceros has reached adulthood and joined forces with a group of single males. Together, they're strong enough to intimidate the buffalo. The dominant males act as the herd's first line of defense. The arrival of the alpha male, who is at the peak of his power, is enough to unsettle the buffalo. The other rhinos manage to disperse the herd. Once the dominant buffalo begins to run, the whole herd follows suit. They can run for a long time, trampling everything in their path. In their frantic stampede, blinded by dust and crashing into one another, they pay no attention to the pitfalls of the savannah. The chief pitfall is loose mud, which dries out quickly and facilitates the lion's hunt for food. Caught up in their frantic stampede, 
Some of the herd get bogged down, making them easy prey for predators and scavengers. In September, the swamps and watering holes are reduced to crusts of earth and a few muddy springs. With their fine sense of smell, the elephants can easily detect the presence of small amounts of water. They dug this hole, causing a spring to gush out. The alpha male has scented a threatening presence. This new watering hole is attracting some of the savannah's other heavyweights. The arrival of the alpha male creates an unusual problem for the elephants. Instead of defending the well against the intruder, they're seized with panic. The Chukudu rangers told us that two years previously, at a time when elephants and rhinos were mixing with one another, Becky gave birth to her first baby. The overly curious calf had approached the dominant rhinoceros, who proceeded to pierce her belly. The baby died in front of Becky and her clan. Since then, the traumatized elephants have been understandably wary of rhinos. Today, the presence of the newborn reinforces their withdrawal instincts. There are indeed events an elephant never forgets. The protective mother rhinoceros refuses to share the bath with her little one. Even within the family, selfishness prevails. The law of the strongest provides no exception. During a drought, elephants pull up trees to feast upon their damp roots. Within a few years, the bush becomes savannah. The elephant calf continues her apprenticeship by imitating the adults. By rubbing her trunk against the ground, she licks the salt it contains. Its minerals contribute to her balanced diet. The calf is now five months old and will suckle until the age of one. Becky is in heat for the first time since giving birth, which Timber has noticed from sniffing her dejections. A 
Excited, he takes advantage of the dominant male's absence to court her, while the baby fidgets restlessly between her feet. The relationship between Becky and Tembo is based on a misunderstanding. Becky has always regarded Tembo as her brother and still shows him affection, but rejects his sexual advances. Instinctively, Tembo senses that Becky is not his sister and sees her as a potential mate. He's unable to resist the pheromones that she emits and the impulses of his virility. Day after day, he doggedly pursues her only for her to wriggle away. Once again, Tembo's efforts lead to nothing but frustration. Rhinoceros have become nervous. Today the alpha male has smelled that one of the females is fertile. The female goes into heat when her baby is around eight months old. Add in a 16 month pregnancy and she's only fertile once every two years. Like all herbivores, she shows no interest in the male, either before, during or after the sexual act. The situation is getting complicated. The female rejects the alpha male and shows aggression towards him. Is she already dominated by another male? Rhinoceros is over 12 years old and has acquired an imposing stature. He feels strong enough to upset the established order by challenging his father and to take his place among the female. The two males engage in intimidation maneuvers. After several charges, the alpha male is showing signs of fatigue and decides to withdraw. The alpha male has been the dominant male for 15 years and is responsible for around 50 births. This formidable heavyweight has made a sizable contribution towards saving this endangered species. His son is now the dominant male and takes his place upon the olfactory throne and defies would-be competitors. He erases all trace of his father by depositing his own marks. To satisfy his sexual urge, he must make one last effort. And maintain the position for an hour, a record in the natural world.
Tembo, meanwhile, is getting more and more involved in the complex relationship with his childhood companion. He continues to shower her with attention, but she somehow manages to dodge the issue. Day after day, night after night, Tembo tries to excite her with foreplay, but Becky refuses to give in. This rejection will have repercussions. For three months, the Chukudu Reserve has seen one storm after another, without a single drop of rain to soothe the tensions between the animals. The intense heat only heightens Tembo's sexual tension. Because the only female elephant on the reserve is rejecting him, he now turns his attention to the young rhinos. It's no longer a case of playing or intimidation, but an unsatisfied sexual urge. For a year, Tembo has been forcing himself on the weakest young rhinos. The rangers even report that he killed a male rhino by trying to mate with him. Pushed to the edge, the rhinos eventually react. The new alpha male engages in combat with the elephant that used to harass him as a baby, finally putting an end to a 15-year rivalry. Tembo lacks the combativeness of a dominant male. Bruised by blows from the new alpha male's horns, he's chased away. Tembo has no choice but to flee further, well beyond the confines of the reserve. Becky and her third calf remain alone for a year. Her newborn has real character and even stands up to lions to keep them at a distance. A few years later, they begin to have a social life amongst other females and adolescents. And when the young lie down to rest, Becky joins the other females in forming a protective ring 